question is from T Got Soul. Do you really need to eat multiple times a day to see gains? I eat two big meal meals and one shake a day to meet my macros. Is that okay? I train five to six days a week. Yeah, this this so years ago, um, this was never a thing. Um, people ate, uh, you know, two or three times a day. It was just part of culture. Typically, it was to you know break the day up type of deal. So you took a break at lunch, and that's what you have that, and then dinner was with your family. Breakfast was in some cultures they didn't have any breakfast, and other cultures they had some. Um, and that was pretty much it for a long time. Then you had strength athletes who started to figure out that the, that the more they ate, the stronger they would get and the more muscle they would build. Well, some of these guys were consuming, you know, four, five, 6,000 calories a day. That gets difficult to do with two or three meals. You know, if you eat three meals and you're eating 6,000 calories, those are 2,000 calorie meals each time. It's a huge meal. It is. And that's, it's going to bog you down and it's just, it just doesn't make sense. So what they would do, is they would start to split these meals up, and they found that it was easier to digest. It was easier on their on their bodies, and so rather than having you know three two thousand calorie meals, maybe they had six you know thousand calorie meals or seven hundred calorie meals or whatever. But then you know as this started happening, they would talk about it, and people said, "Oh, you know that's the way that guy eats, so that's the way I need to eat as well to make gains." Supplement companies got a hold of this and thought, "What a brilliant way to sell protein powder and meal replacement shakes," because the average person is going to hear the message that I need to eat five times a day, but the average person isn't going to make five meals. So they're going to what they're going to do is eat their normal two or three meals, throw in some shakes or some whatever. And it became this whole thing about like eating small meals burns more calories, builds more muscle. You need protein all day long or your muscles start to deteriorate or it speeds up your metabolism because of the thermic effect and all this other stuff. Total, complete bullshit. Um, at the end of the day, it's all personal preference. Do you think that? Down. Do you think that there's some somewhat though of um, got to be kind of a, a sweet spot though for each individual? Like, and why I'm saying this is the digestive system is probably like every other system of the body, and you could probably overdo it just like anything else. Totally. Just like we could overtax our our uh, muscular system by training too hard mm -hmm. or our CNS, right? So. If, if that's the case, like, you know, if somebody who has like, let's say, um, you know, 2,500 calorie maintenance, like that's what they need to eat. And so that divided up over two big meals and a shake, probably not that big of a deal. 900 to 1,000 calories. Mm -hmm. It's not probably putting a ton of stress on the digestive system. But, you know, what about what do you think about someone who's trying to fit, you know, 5,000 or 4,000 calories in two or three meals and consuming 2,000 calories, especially if you're eating 2,000 calories of good calories, that's a lot of probably volume as mm. far as food on the digestive system all at once. I would think, especially if you have habits of doing that and then sitting down at a desk or not getting up and moving around, something, I mean, I just feel like common sense says that also would not be the most ideal way to eat too. Even if, if and, and here's the thing, I know already because I've read the studies that what I'm saying is not supported. Like if it comes, because they'll measure things like building muscle. If we just measure, uh, you know, if you hit your macros, whether you hit it in one meal or six meals, the science shows that it doesn't make a difference. But then I wonder about like how, how healthy or how ideal is that for my digestive system right. if I'm stressing it with so much food in such a short period of time? And would it be better like training, you know, smaller doses more frequently? Uh, as far as on the stress level, and is there? Do you think there is a sweet spot for each individual? Yeah. So this, so this, yes, the extre both extremes are not good. So eating too much at once, we've all done that. That's obviously not good. Eating too frequently has also been shown to increase inflammation in the body and cause uh, digestive issues, especially in people who already have gut issues. So I'm like this. So when I'm having gut issues, eating less frequently, way better than eating uh, more frequently. More frequently really uh, messes me up. But there's a limit, right? Like, sure, eating less frequently might be better for my gut, but what if I you know, do it so infrequently that I'm eating you know, 5,000 calories in a meal or whatever? Well, then that can definitely cause a problem. Now, evolution, you know, evolutionarily speaking, humans probably ate food when it was around, which meant we probably ate a little bit here and there by finding it. So there's this edible plant, there's this whatever but not much but then when we did kill something we probably ate a lot of it i don't you know we didn't have refrigerators and you know stuff like that and so we probably ate until we were full um and then you know we ate again when we were full and then the meat was gone and now we probably went for long periods without food this is why fasting 
shows that you know that it's got some some health benefits. Um, but as far as the the what we were sold for so long, and this to me was the biggest like shocking paradigm shattering moment for me in all of my fitness career. This was one of the first dominoes that fell. And the reason why I call it a domino is because when I realized that this was false, you know, the myth that you have to eat small meals throughout the day because it speeds up your metabolism. You have to, your muscles have to have protein all day long. Uh, otherwise they'll start to cannibalize themselves. I believe that wholeheartedly for a long time. We were told that by, Courses that we took, we were told that by obviously supplement oh, companies, yeah, magazine. Yeah, I always had everything. protein bars in my pocket, to- so I was so uh, afraid every that two hours muscle would fall. I'd off go my to the body. gas station just to get a bar. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and and I was so bought into this, and I sold it so much to clients. You know, I used to tell clients, "There's only one athlete that eats once a day." You know, the sumo wrestler, and look how fat they are. I used to have these like great presentations selling this to people for so I, I bought into it. When I finally started to look into the science, which was years later. I started to you know, think to myself, like, this doesn't sound right. Like, are these guys full of shit? Then I started experimenting with my own diet and realized it was complete bullshit. And it was the first domino because once that one fell, then I started to question all the what I thought were truths uh, in the stuff that I did. And I started to realize that a lot of them weren't, weren't true. And at the end of the day, it just boils down to this. It's personal preference. You oh, know, yeah. it's like what works great for you and that's it. At the end of the day, it's like food quality calories and macros kind of make the most sense and don't eat too close to bedtime and there's really not, not much else. I think figuring that out like your your own digestive needs like what what works best for you that's not going to impede on your sleep that's not going to impede on your training and like detract you from energy and throughout the day that's all the kind of shit you got to figure out and then whatever structure works best for that is what you apply. 